Okay, so yesterday was all about here's the formula and find some information out. Today is all about here's a bunch of information. Find a formula. Now, again, ooh, problem solving. This is going to suck, right? But even in the other class, people are like, okay, I get this trig unit now. So the real life or I guess picture examples are helping people understand what all this A, B, C, D stuff is. So we're going to do uh, just two questions and then you're just going to get four to do in class and uh, hopefully get them all done. So here is a tire okay, and it has a nail in it and every time it's just going around and around. If you've ever had a rock in your tire and you're going kind of slow, you'll hear it go tick, 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 tick every time. Okay? That's what we're talking about here. Same thing. Picked up a nail and it's going tick, tick, tick every time. And we have to find out the entire equation for this. They said they want the sine equation. If you look down here, and another thing they, we find out is what don't I need to be finding? Look down here. What don't I need to be looking for? See, so we know there has been no shift. And it is a sine graph. Now, all they've given me is this picture and this sentence. Okay, a tire has a 50 centimeter uh, diameter and rotates 10 revolutions per minute. After 4.5 seconds, the nail touches the ground. Now, there's a lot of information in there. And this, uh, this question depends on you knowing the entire trig unit to be able to do it. So, let's go. We've got A, B, and D to find. Let's do it as a class. You got anything? Tell me what you got. Hmm? A is 25. How are you getting A is 25? Okay. So the first thing we've got is we know the diameter is 50, so the radius is 25. Now, do you see that that nail will always be 20, well, at the height, will be 25 away from the middle, right? So... In this case, we're going to say that the radius would be the same thing as the amplitude, right? So already we have A is 25. Okay, now I'm not going to rush through this. these two questions. We're going to go slow. And I'm not doing anything without people giving me the answers, okay? What else you got? Okay, distance between the peaks is how much? 50 times pi. Okay, how are you getting 50 times pi? Okay, so you're using, uh, you're saying that this, now, the thing is though, our period is on the bottom, right? So this is height. This is time. So I need to know not the circumference of the circle, but I need to know how long is it. In a period is always used in time. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, now how are you getting that? Okay, so how are you getting 4.5 is between the peaks? Because it's, well, from here to here is 4.5, right? Now it says it takes 4.5 after 4, so it's right here. It does this. First tick should be 4.5, okay? That's how I read it. This right here is 4.5. Well, no, because then the nail would have to have been here.
it says, so it says, it starts here. It says after 4.5 seconds, it hits here. So, yeah. Okay, slow down. Can I write that down? So we got 10 revolutions for 60 seconds. That's just dividing by 10. So one revolution would be our, that's a complete period. And how long does that take? Six seconds. So I would say from here to here, no, nope, that's not right, sorry. Uh, from here to here would be six seconds. So the six would not be there, sorry. So, so six seconds would be our, no, okay, so P equals six seconds. So we can now find B as? 2 pi over 6, which equals pi over 3. What's D? It's actually, to me, the easiest one, but maybe I'm just a D guy. What? Hmm? Why? So you're saying this is zero, so you're taking max minus min, or max plus min, right, over two. Oops, that's not a two. And then, so that would be, what's max? 50 plus zero divided by two equals 25. And I would just visually see it as 25, right? So now, the equation for that thing is h of t equals 25 sine pi over 3t plus 25. Now tell me that's not a beautiful thing. Now that's pretty awesome if you understand that, because that's this last four lessons, right? Now, I want to start asking some questions. Okay. Which one of these would be affected if I started driving a little bit faster? A, B, or D? B. Because driving faster affects my period. Which one would be affected if I jacked up the car? Would A? Does the tire get bigger when you jack up the car? I'll get a lot of people on A and D, though. They'll pick A and D. Okay? D should change. That's the only thing. My midline changes. Like, D is the center of the stuff going on. And that's like the middle of your tire, right? So when you jack it up, your tire shouldn't get bigger. I mean, that'd be weird, right? You'd be going, that's kind of weird. So make sure it's weird on here that it shouldn't be happening. So I want to be able to ask those questions on a test. I'd be able to say, okay, formula, and then the next question would be, which one of these would be affected if I jacked up the car? Or what would be the new formula if I jacked up the car two centimeters? Okay, that would take D to... 27, right? If I jacked it up 2 centimeters, 26, 27. You getting this? Okay, so that's kind of how I need you. Now, how would, I, how would you make a question that would affect A? The same question, what could you do to affect A? 
rip some tread off or something. I don't know, right? You'd have to make that tire smaller or bigger somehow. Maybe blew up the tire. I don't know. Okay? Not blew up some boom. I mean with air. Okay? So start thinking that way. Now the C is how far to the nearest tenth of a centimeter is a nail above the ground after 6.5 centimeters? Now, seconds. So you kind of even have to understand where would that be? Okay. So, you know, I'm thinking it should be around like here somewhere. Just to give a ref. Now you can graph this or you can actually take 6.5 because that's T. You can put it right in there. So just H of T equals 25 sine pi over 3 times 6.5 plus 25. And you should get I need to turn the heat down a little bit more. Obviously, people are asleep. It's too hot in here. I'm getting the point. Loud and clear. Thirty-seven point five centimeter above the ground is where that would be. So I. I, in my opinion, think this tire question really helps people understand what A, B, and D are. Okay, now we're going to get into a uh, little bit of a history lesson. The first Ferris wheel ever was built, uh, ever built, was created by a bridge builder by the name of George W. Ferris in 1893. The diameter of the wheel was approximately 76 meters. And the maximum height of the Ferris wheel was approximately 8 or 80 meters. The wheel had 36 wooden carts on the wheel, and each cart could hold approximately 60 people. Not making it up. The Ferris wheel was uh, introduced at the, uh, to the World Fair in 1893 of Chicago. This il the illustration shown is a copy of a photograph of this original wheel. Now, if the, reel, if the wheel rotated every nine minutes, use the data in the table to sketch a sinusoidal graph. Now, remember, I still have people thinking of sinusoidal graph as a sine graph. It's sine or cos. And represents the height of the car in meters as a function of time in minutes. Assume that the car is as low as point t equals zero. Okay, Cody, just let it go. Okay, work. Now, Let's start using our chart. We have at zero time, four meters above the ground. Now, what is this telling us right now? Start to think about the situation. What, what, what is there at four meters? It would a Ferris wheel be touching the ground. No. So what do you think's at four meters? Hmm? It, yeah, it's a minimum, but what in real life is probably happening at that point? That's probably a platform, I'm assuming, right? And these carts are pretty big. Okay, I'd like to see the insurance that he had to pay for this thing because 60 people a car, you're, a lot of people are going down if this thing breaks. So that's a platform. They're getting on and... Hey, back in these days, everything breaks, right? The Hindenburg, all that stuff. People are figuring it out. Now you have to wear seat belts, and there's airbags and all these things. But a lot of people died before. They're like, we need to put a seat belt in those cars. You know, that'd be a good idea, I think. Now, the next thing we're looking at is just going to go along with 42 is 2.25. So 2.25, just come up and kind of do 42. Next is... 4.5 is 80 meters. So come up 4.5, hit 80. Okay, next 6.75. You can just roughly do it. It doesn't have a 6.75, but it's closer to 7, right? And 
or 42 again. And then nine seconds, it, back to four. All grade 11 students, please come down to the atrium as we prepare to go to the Citadel. All grade 11s, come to the atrium for heading off to the Citadel. Thank you. Okay, so that would be my graph. Okay, now with this information, we have to come up with every single one this time, A, B, C, and D. Okay, once again, we're going to do it as a class. So if you got any ideas, just put up your hand. Be happy to hear, them, hear you out. A is 38, okay? Um, again, that's the radius. So, so far we've got the amplitude is 38 meters. It'd be nice to start to get this into the diagram, though. So how am I going to use that 38 to help me find anything else? Hmm? Any ideas? What do I do with that 38? That's also my midline, is it? No, I'm not agreeing with you there, because we've jacked up the tire, haven't we? But I could come down 38, could I not? Does that make sense? If I come down 38, what would that be, that point? That would be 42. So I would say that would be my midline. And that's why this one's a little bit different than the last one. We've jacked up the tire. It's above the ground, right? That affects D. So now we just got D. Okay, so we got 50% of them. Okay, so we got, so we can find B by doing 2 pi over P, right? And what are you saying? What's the period? So we're going to get 2 pi. It says it goes around every 9 minutes. So 2 pi over 9 is 2 pi over 9. So B is 2 pi over 9. It's almost getting too easy. I got one left, C. So I'm just going to write this in. D, we got 42, and A, we got 38. Maximum. That's um, A, max minus min divided by 2 is A. How have I ever told you to find C? It's the distance from the y-axis. Now, if this was a sine graph, this is where it's supposed to, so you always go to the midline, you guys. This is where it's supposed to start, correct? If this was sine. But this is a coast graph. Coast graphs always start high and end low. So this is, this is supposed to be on the y-axis. Do you get that? In a normal coast graph without any horizontal phase shift, this is supposed to be on the y-axis. But it's not on the y-axis. It has been shifted over how far? 4.5. So C is 4.5 right, in this case, seconds. Any questions here? Any thing that I have to clarify? We're all good? So then you've got H of T equals 
38 cos 2 pi over 9, and this would be t minus 4.5 plus 42. Now, if you haven't been coming to class, good luck getting that thing. Now, I think it's pretty cool at this stage that you can now look at a picture and come up with a formula like that. Okay? But it's got to be, like, you got to be really deliberate at saying, okay, this is how I'm always going to find C, this is how I'm always going to find D. And we found D and uh, A by looking at the picture. But you can also use max minus min divided by 2 and max plus min divided by 2, right? Another way to check that stuff over. Now, what's really nice is this is easy to graph because it gives you the window settings by looking at the graph, right? 0 to 9, 0 to 90. Okay, so I want everybody putting this in to their calculator. Because C, you could just put in the 5. It's a good investment if you're doing two questions to put it in because D, you're going to have to graph it anyway. Now, I think you'd have to be crazy on a diploma to not put this in your graphing calculator to just make sure it looks like the picture that you thought it would be. And that's pretty good uh, clarification for you that you did it right. So now, once you've got that, you just have to hit trace 5, right? What do you get? Hmm? 78 meters, good. Now you just, for the next one, you're going to have to do y2 of 10 and do intersection. So we're coming up the first time we hit 10 meters. So what I'm looking for is this spot right here, right? Looking for that time. Forty-nine seconds. What did you get as a decimal? So that's point eight one five nine of times sixty seconds, and you get. 48.955, so we're going to say 49 seconds. Does this make sense? Okay, just finished the first trig unit. Before you know it, I'll be saying that about the second trig unit, and let's get ready for that diploma thing. Okay, so let's get your work done in class, and uh, we'll get your last test back to you so you can check it over and make sure your mark's accurate. One to four, questions one to four. Okay, guys, if you don't need this time, then I can start on to the next unit. I got no problems. I just hate wasting time. Hmm? Practice test? <laughs>